I'm Dr. Tasolanay Capriela. Today, I will be discussing the EINC or Essential Intrapartum Newborn Care. The Essential Intrapartum Newborn Care is a package of evidence-based practices recommended by the Department of Health, Philippine Health Insurance Corporation, and the World Health Organization as the standard of care in all births by skilled attendants in all government and private settings. At the heart of the protocol are four time-bound interventions. Immediate drying, skin-to-skin contact, proper cord clamping and cutting, non-separation of baby from mother and breastfeeding initiation, which I will be demonstrating with the use of a simulated patient and a newborn doll. For this procedure, we will be needing a pair of surgical gloves, two warm blankets, bonnet, cord care set, erythromycin, vitamin K, and hepatitis B vaccine. To start, proper hand washing should be done with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 counts with each movement. After that, wear a two pair of surgical gloves. Once the newborn is out, proceed to immediate drying using a dry, warm, and clean blanket. To really dry the newborn, wiping the face, eyes, head, front and back, arms and legs. Dry the baby for at least 30 seconds. This will stimulate the newborn to breathe. Do not wipe off the vernix as this will help to continuously serve as a protective cover for the newborn. Do not wash the newborn within the first 6 hours of life as it may lead to hypothermia and infection. Do a rapid assessment of breathing while drying the newborn, then remove the wet cloth. The second component of the EINC protocol is skin-to-skin -skin contact. Place the newborn prone on the mother's abdomen or between the breast to initiate the importance of the skin-to-skin -skin contact. Place the bonnet on the newborn's head. Use the second dry, warm, and clean blanket to cover the newborn's back to keep the infant warm. Benefits of skin-to-skin -skin contact are to promote bonding between mother and child, increases the chances of overall success of breastfeeding, allows colonization with good bacteria via maternal skin thora, protects the newborn from hypoglycemia. For the third component of the EINC protocol, which is the proper cord clumping and cutting, we need to remove the first set of gloves prior to handling of the cord. Do not cut the cord immediately. Instead, clump and cut the cord once the pulsation stops. Clump the cord at 2 cm from the base of the umbilicus. Apply the second clump at 5 cm from the base of the umbilicus. Cut between ties with sterile instrument. Observe for oozing blood. Do not milk the cord towards the newborn. Inject 10 IU of oxytocin into the mother's arm to prevent uterine atony. Benefits of proper cord clumping are Waiting for 1-3 to three minutes or until the cord pulsations have stopped prevents anemia Protects preterms from intraventricular hemorrhages The fourth component of the EINC protocol is the non-separation of baby from mother and breastfeeding initiation Observe the newborn carefully At about 30 minutes after birth, the newborn will start to show feeding cues such as opening of mouth tonguing, licking, and rooting that indicates he is ready for breastfeed. Encourage the mother to nudge her newborn toward the breast to seek out the nipple. Counsel on positioning and attachment. After the newborn completes his first breastfeed and detaches from the breast while he is with his mother, carry out the eye care procedures and administer vaccines. Let the infant in mother's arms as she recovers from giving birth. The newborn stays with his mother as she is brought to a room. The actor scores an assessment of the newborn immediately after birth. It is a rapid scoring system based on physiologic responses to the birth process. It is a good method for assessing the need to resuscitate a newborn. At intervals of 1 minute and 5 minutes after birth, 
Each of the five physiologic parameters is observed. Heart rate, respiratory effort, muscle tone, reflex irritability, and color. Its five components classify the newborn's neurologic recovery from the stress of birth and immediate adaptation to extrauterine life. Scoring is based on a three-point scale, 0, 1, or 2 for each component. Total scores range from 0 to 10. As we can see from the upper scoring system table lifted from the plates, a score of 0 will present a clinical sign of heart rate that is absent, respiratory effort that is absent, muscle tone that is flaccid, reflex irritability without responses, color of skin with blue or pale. A score of 1 will indicate that a heart rate is less than 100, respiratory effort is slow and irregular, muscle tone may have some flexion of the arms and legs, and there will be a grimace in reflex irritability. Pink, body, blue extremities will be the color of the skin. For a score of 2, it will indicate that the heart rate is more than 100, respiratory effort is good and strong, muscle tone is active, reflex irritability will be vigorous cry, sneeze or cough, and the color will be pink all over. The Bollard scoring system estimates gestational age to within two weeks, even in extremely premature infants. The new Bollard score is commonly used to determine gestational age, and here's how it works. Scores are given for six physical and six nerve and muscle development, which is also called neuromuscular signs of maturity. The scores for each may range from negative one to five. The scores are added together to determine the baby's gestational age. The total score may range from negative 10 to 50. Premature babies have low scores. Babies born late have high scores. The neuromuscular assessment includes an exam of the following. For posture, it is how the baby holds his or her arms and legs. For square window, it is how far the baby's hands can be flexed toward the wrist. For arm recoil, it is how well the baby's arms spring back to a flexed position. For popliteal angle, it is how well the baby's knees bend and straighten. For scarf sign, it is how far the elbows can be moved across the baby's chest. For heel to ear, it is how close the baby's feet can be moved to the ears. The physical assessment includes an exam of the following physical characteristics. For skin texture, skin may be sticky, smooth, or peeling. For lanugo, this is the soft downy part on a baby's body. It's absent in premature babies. It is present in full-term babies but not in babies born late. For plantar surface, these are the creases on the soles of the feet. They range from absent to covering the entire foot. For the breast, the thickness and size of the breast tissue and the areola are assessed. For eyes and ears, eyelids are checked to see if they are open or fused shut. The amount of cartilage and stiffness of the ear tissues are also noted. For male genitals, the presence of testes and the look of the scrotum from smooth to wrinkled is verified. For female genitals, the appearance and size of the clitoris and the labia are noted.